Uh, so our next presenter is uh, Jyoti Prasad uh, Panuli. Uh, he's a senior energy planner and a senior researcher at Technical University of Denmark, or DTU. Uh, he's actively working on areas of variable energy sources, alternative energy, energy efficiency, and technology. Um, he's going to present on charging infrastructure policy framework. Uh, so Jyoti, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Shetu. Actually, my presentation is on this particular, specifically on this uh, policy advice paper, EV charging infrastructure. This is based on the suggestion from the organizers. This is a policy advisory paper on which solution plus partners, several partners have been working on. So this is uh, one of the partners actually is FIA who just made the presentation. So uh, and, and as a lot of this is already in this paper also. So I would be skipping the things which have been already presented and uh, covering uh, other things which are not uh, probably covered by other partners in this, in this because they, these are the way a lot of partners as you can see that Idiada has contributed, FIA has contributed, U, UMI has, University has contributed and UNAP has contributed. And uh, of course, DTU from DTU side, I work with the UNAP DTU partnership. And so we have also contributed to this paper. There are five chapters in this uh, report, actually report. I'll uh, skip the introduction and uh, more of background. But actually in this chapter also, there is a lot of info, technical information about EV charging and then uh, barriers to deployment of EV charging infrastructure. So I'll be, going through some of them, focusing on these uh, issues, technical issues and barriers, which are not explained in detail so far. And then there are the charger types uh, like, uh, and the, you know, battery swapping, open standards, interoperability, grid management issues. Some of these already have been covered by my previous speaker, Hakim, from FIA. And then policies to overcome barriers. And this is also based on um, the, a lot of uh, our experience also in other projects where like we are working with Zimbabwe, we are working with Ghana and, uh, and, and other countries and India and all that. Then identification of charging needs. In this uh, very briefly one slide, I'll be covering on forecasting ch uh, charging demand and location of charging points. And you, know, you have a lot of criteria for that. There are contractual models, and one of which um, uh, Hake mentioned about public procurement, and which is one of the very important. But again, this is an area where there will be probably more presentation, so I would uh, not be covering this. And then very briefly, I'll let you also know that what kind of final strategy the partners put together have put for the, you know, for the Kigali. So now uh, uh, in Kigali, actually, there is a so-called demonstration action is uh, covers these four areas. And uh, all these uh, current uh, you know, issues and recommendation and uh, barriers mostly you know, relate to these uh, areas. One is that electric share bicycles, electric motorcycles, electric buses, and then finally that how do you integrate this electric mobility with all these uh, new e vehicles coming in the current uh, transport so these are the way, these are the primarily four uh, areas which are being covered in the kigali demonstration because solution plus at uh, intensity so kigali is just one of these cities there this one unfortunately has been again in detail presented by Hakim, my previous uh, speaker here, that ensures sufficient coverage of recharging infrastructure, ensures seamless charging with consumer-centric focus, ensure reliable and easily accessible payment method. So obviously I don't have to go through this. I'm simply mentioning that these are the requirements uh, you know, from a, for, from a charging infrastructure and you know now very well what this means from the previous presentation. So what I'll come to the next is that if these are the requirements, what are actually the issues? What are the kind of uh, barriers and all that, that that the countries could face from these, uh, for these to fulfill these requirements? And these barriers basically come from, uh, from where do they come actually? 
they come that several several countries there have been the, now these studies on barriers and uh, this is kind of you can say a, a, a synthesis of these kind of uh, issues that the various countries are facing at different stages of the development of electric mobility so the in this series of these barriers the one of the foremost and most important barrier you know are you know like uh, i mean it's not that the barrier is one or two all barriers are extremely important for mobility to take forward but you know the countries will move forward the first two barrier for example the economic and financial barriers and technical barriers they really are at the heart of the you, you can say the uh, mobility issues to, to take them forward and you know you can see for example you know if you go with the cost for example it's just given from 2019 figures and i think this was also contributed by, contributed in the paper by fia but the level will charger in 2019 would cost around 813 dollar per charger and this is just for 1.2 to 1.4 kilowatt and this is level level charger where do you put this you put it maybe in home you can or maybe in offices and all that and the charging time for this can be as high as you know like eight hours ten hours overnight charging kind of thing then you go to level two charger and then you know like where the cost increases that uh, the the you know your kilowatt increases and your uh, charger per cost as a result also increases and then if you go finally to the fast charging which is needed on like in highways and all those kind of places where the, you don't want to spend much time then the cost for buses for example for fast charging can be as high as hundred and forty thousand dollars per charger so this becomes a very important issue that how do you really you know address this issue of cost one of the things, of course, it needs a lot of uh, issue it has to do with demand, that how much is demand, uh, you know, and, and so that the cost also can be, uh, you know, amortized over a number of consumers and so that, you know, you have per head co cost comes down. It becomes a kind of chicken and uh, egg issue here. And uh, there are ways, of course, to deal with this. Uh, and uh, that will come to the uh, second stage of the, basically the measures. Then technical barriers, these again have been discussed quite in detail. So probably again, I don't um, have to mention too many of these, except I'll just very briefly mention the one which are, which are, uh, you know, you can say that not uh, that much covered. Multiple charging and battery standards, you saw that, you know, what it, what it can do to basically, you know, to the consumers that if there are too many standards, then, you know, you are really confused and one, one thing cannot work at other place and uh, so on and things like that building codes and technical standards you know you need uh, in for home charging that the buildings have those facilities and one needs the building codes for that space so in the new construction you need to have those codes currently this is the new technology these are the kind of things where the new technology would always have a lack of skilled personnel so it may not be that difficult basically to provide, uh, you know, make the uh, skill, but then it needs a proper training program at the in a country level. Scaling up when when this uh, deployment is scaled up, and you so just saw that you know that there will be tremendous increase in the electricity demand. Now there would be other many ways to actually address that issue, but in in any case, you might need a grid upgradation because you know your demand overall demand has increased uh, and uh, you know these this grid upgradation can be a, a also a quite an expensive issue it, the cost involved can be very high there new technologies are uh, emerging every day and uh, so there that can be also you know and for example now you know there is this uh, vehicle to grid technology when you are trying to integrate uh, renewable in the grid then it can be one of the very uh, the good technology in terms of you know providing you uh, a storage itself in the cars you know when vehicle to grid so the vehicle actually can vehicles battery can actually act as a kind of a storage so these are the very new technology in the stage of a pilot stage right now there can be multiple uh, infrastructure uh, requirements 
So, you know, for the various kind of infrastructure, you know, somebody also mentioned that what is, what is better battery swapping? So it is not actually directly a question of a better and all that. It, it, it's that at some stage for some kind of mobility, you can think of uh, battery swapping, but it requires a different infrastructure. Similarly, for your normal uh, going through this normal uh, current technology of charging, then it requires a different technology. So, what kind of infrastructure you are to, going to build up for? What kind of vehicles you are going to build up? This becomes an issue which needs to be decided at. And you can see that in some countries, the battery swapping has been working very well. And I know, for example, in India, this has picked up a lot. And uh, there can be even issues in uh, basically, you know, in countries where we are working in Ghana and, for example, Zimbabwe, that people actually want to retrofit their existing cars. They wouldn't want to buy in, uh, you know, the new, new, new electric vehicle. So, how, what are the costs involved in that? What are the kind of technologies involved to do that? And those are the kind of things which will uh, also determine a lot of these uh, deployment. And what happens is that once you have select a particular technology, there is always, you know, technology lock-in. It, its life is 10 years or 20 years, and you have spent so much of money on this that you, it becomes a lock-in. So it is important that these barriers are removed and the proper technology is selected. Uh, related to that is, you know, like there are these policy and regulatory barriers in practically countries, you know. If, for example, if there is a no standards, then there is a market fragmentation. The market, so there are different kind of uh, standards, different people can uh, only do, go to it, only specific stations and only, you know, charge there. Then the, there is a market fragmentation, there is not enough demand, so the infrastructure cannot be built up. So regulation uh, on standards can be handy on that, that, you know, a country issues a standard, then the, the demand, you know, can be, can pick up uh, on the, much faster than if you have no standards there. So it becomes very important to have that regulation. The role of utilities, as you saw that uh, the electricity is one of the very important factor for charging. And so utilities, uh, what role they will have, will the, uh, in some countries it's also being explored that utilities could actually themselves set up these uh, kind of uh, charging stations or whether it is going to be some other private investors who are going to do. So these rules uh, with the, and the distribution companies will can be unique to the country, but they will need to be resolved. Price of electricity is another factor because uh, in many countries, the electricity prices are very high and the electric mobility, in spite of you know, giving other, uh, other incentives, it may not be that uh, you can, uh, it can be viable. Information and awareness barriers, actually, you know, it looks simple, but it has emerged one of the major barriers in many countries. Even the government support policies, policies for example, are really not uh, known to the, to the public. Uh, I'll not go through these because this, uh, the technical issues have been covered by a colleague that, uh, you know, what kind of charger, there are a variety of chargers there whether you want slow or fast, and then you have these criteria, cost of charger, type of uh, e-mobility it is, cost of system. So these kind of uh, criteria are, can be used to select a charger. This again has been discussed quite well in detail, so I don't have to go through this, what kind of standards, and you can see that there are several standards which have emerged. I'll simply mention that, you know, for example, this now a new standard uh, on which uh, China and Japan are working, it uh, started working in 2020. They want to make it uh, by 2035 international standard. So it can be very long process, you know, in some cases to for international um, standard to evolve. Interoperability issue again has been covered by Hakim, so my life is made much easier by doing that, that you know that interoperability refers primarily to a lot of communication between various charger uh, infrastructure component. So again, I don't have to really go through this. Uh, except uh, saying that, you know, that, um, the, that if this issue is not taken into consideration, the assets on which you have put so much investment in the country can be obsolete in uh, no time. This again has been uh, actually this uh, uh, figure issue sees from this paper is the same one FIA has contributed there. 
and this they have already uh, is already explained that what it uh, you know how much the smart charging can for example can contribute to your flattening of this peak curve because the peak electricity providing can be very expensive proposition so this is a grid management becomes a very important technical issue battery swapping as i said you know it can be very pop it's very popular where particularly for two and three wheelers where the batteries are not that heavy it can be a issue of course you can have a robot to change the battery in uh, those charging station but then your infrastructure can be totally different requirements so this is uh, something on which uh, primarily the most of the countries where uh, it's for two and three wheelers it is being actually preferred for that kind of uh, policies for addressing these barriers i along with the barriers i already discussed i'll very briefly uh, mention that you know like economic and financial barrier there are variety of these policies many countries are using subsidies incentives reduce or no parking fees electric reduce electricity rates low lease or rental price for establishing charging sites and you know it's not need not to be everything but it needs to be combination of this and the basic principle is that the electric mobility with after these subsidies and the taxes and rebates should become competitive with your existing um, you know uh, the fossil fuel based uh, transportation unless it is competitive you obviously it cannot pick up so the so for example you might need to calculate the uh, total cost of ownership for the uh, vehicle owners and then put these rebates and incentives in a way that the co total cost of ownership is favorable for electric vehicles compared to for example you know to the, the to the traditional vehicles and that's only uh, then only of course you will have a need for the charging station so this is kind of mutually reinforcing areas where you know you have you may need to provide these subsidy incentives either to the charging charging stations as well as uh, for the vehicle owners so technical barriers as i mentioned that uh, along with the barrier description so i don't have to go into detail with this um, one of the things with only which i will mention is that it is very important you know uh, policies which have been have been promoting you know electric mobility and therefore the charging facilities that you can have low emission zones for example and that um, uh, where where you then through providing public charging facilities, you know, this kind of uh, requirements can be met. You can have also, you know, in the, your uh, transportation plans, which are now also sometimes, you know, you refer the sustainable urban mobility plan is specifically for the transport. EV charging structure can be an uh, integral component of that. So dealing, you know, as a part of the overall plan can really help the the build, building of the infrastructure quite fast for awareness the, again there are well-known uh, measures like demonstration pilots awareness campaigns and of course uh, ev champions it can be celebrities and other who like uh, to promote these kind of uh, mobility which will help promote the charging i think uh, uh, just uh, just uh, forecasting charging demand uh, it is important uh, you know because you how you decide where you will put up charging station so for that and there are a variety of models available for that again this was uh, discussed so i don't want to go into detail in this charging location also has been covered home charging workplace charging published charging by my previous colleagues so where you put what kind of charging station is a function of that. This is covered in our paper, but uh, now you have had presentation on this, so I don't want to go through this. Uh, one of the things which I think uh, finally I just wanted to mention is that in your barrier analysis and policy measures, one of the very important component is stakeholder consultation even when you decide what you need to what where you want to go for whether you are you know establishing a strapping station or where you want to do the two wheeler or three wheeler or whatever it is stakeholder consultation are extremely important because any measures you take you know later on you see but this is not working it is because 
the uh, appropriate stakeholders have not been consulted. So this is one of the most important uh, measure, in my opinion, when you are doing any kind of barrier analysis or going for the policy measures, that you make a list of all important stakeholders and involve them meaningfully. And, and actually, they should be the one who come out with these various policy measures so that uh, they are then success. They take ownership of that and it becomes successful. I think uh, I also in this paper, there are two examples of uh, China and India. They are just for your reference, so I don't want to go through that. I think I've already taken uh, the, the time which was there allocated. So thank you very much for your attention and I'll be available for the questions later. Thanks.